They're rooting for the problem to get worse. They're rooting for mysteries, unknown cases, quarantines, towns, for it to become an absolute national crisis for one reason and one reason alone. They have yet to find a reason to try to drag down the presidency of Donald Trump. They don't care about the public health aspect of this, most of them. They care about how this can be used to damage Donald Trump and build up whoever the Democrats nominate. Democrats and their media cronies have decided to weaponize fear and also weaponize suffering to improve their chances against Trump in November. You all know the drill. Every time CNN gets called out for the corruption and their obvious agenda-driven bias, they lash out at their critics and their business competition and accuse them of what they're currently engaged in. It's been pretty obvious from the get-go that the media is using the coronavirus as a political weapon against Trump to score points before the election. And we actually have data to back this up. According to the Media Research Council, they identified 44 guest interviews on CNN between 6 a.m. and 11.15 9 p.m. Eastern on February 27th. Out of 136 questions that the host asked about the epidemic, 82, that's 60%, invited guests, uh, medical specialists, uh, to criticize the Trump administration's handling of the epidemic. They point to several examples of CNN host Poppy Harlow pressuring guests to attack Trump when they're clearly uncomfortable in doing so. In one embarrassing instance, she pressed a Democrat legislator to attack Trump, who rebuffed her attempts, saying, quote, you know what? I don't think this is a time to take shots. Taking cheap shots at people right now is not the right thing to do. This administration has a war on science, often for political reasons, but it should still shock you that Trump slashed the government agencies that would have been responsible for handling an outbreak. Some of the criticism coming at the White House is that they have been cutting positions. Your position that you held on the National Security Council, for example. Are you concerned that this is impacting their response? Is he worried that more about you know, his, his best case for re-election than the real health threat here? Is the president misleading the American people about the virus and the outbreak? Given uh, Vice President Pence's history as governor dealing with a recent public health crisis, is he the best equipped to lead this effort at the White House? Do you think that he's the right point person? What exactly does his record on public health tell us. Which is why some eyebrows raised when President Trump, posting a Pepto-Bismol colored tie, typed his VP Mike Pence to lead America's response to the coronavirus. Here's the thing, Mr. President. Pandemics don't care about politics. The smug arrogance of that hypocritical hack is enough to give me an aneurysm. The media and CNN in particular aren't just reporting the facts. They're using this crisis to score political points against Trump. Since we're on the topic of coronavirus, it's worth pointing out that the CDC has warned Americans to prepare for significant disruptions to daily life. And while I do think the media is fear-mongering for political purposes, I do recommend taking the CDC's advice and begin preparing for the worst. When emergencies strike, you always see news stories of long lines of people and empty store shelves. There's no need to be a part of that chaos and the possibility of having to deal with FEMA food lines. Those that know what's coming are using today to prepare. You should make a plan too. Start by building an emergency food supply. And I trust and use my Patriot Supply. You can too. They're experts in emergency preparedness and have a guaranteed two-day delivery. Disasters won't wait. Neither should you. This week, save $70 on a two-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website, preparewithdronetech.com. My Patriot Food Supply Kits last up to 25 years in storage and include breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. Order a few today and receive a guaranteed two-day delivery discreetly to your door. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70. Those that know what's coming are preparing. Go to preparewithdronetech.com. Preparewithdronetech.com. So clearly, they're interested in two things, fear-mongering and undermining President Trump. Don't misunderstand me. There's absolutely nothing wrong with criticism and scrutiny of the government, especially at a time when we might be at the beginning of a global pandemic. However, that's not really what we're seeing. We're seeing fear-mongering over the vice president's religion and the fact that he prays. We're seeing so-called journalists call it Trump virus and reporting that if you feel sick, Trump is the one to blame. I've even seen people in the media 
media and on Twitter suggesting that we're all doomed because we don't have a nationalized healthcare system without admitting the fact that this all started in a nationalized healthcare system. Are um, people who are, for some reason, only making this about politics, trying to focus only on politics, and that's because they are hammers, so all they see are nails. The president, his lack of credibility is an issue, and the White House deserves scrutiny on that front, but it does seem like there's an attempt from pro-Trump media to make this all about Trump and politics when that's really not the arena this is being fought in. The battle against this virus is not being fought in the political arena, but that's right. the only place they know. Thanks. Don't watch, don't watch, Rob. don't look at the markets yeah. uh, in free fall, etc. There is this attempt to kind of put earmuffs on and try not to pay attention to what's going on. Notice how he completely denies that the media is using this for political purposes against Trump, but then later sneaks in this justification for doing so. Unfortunately, the president, his lack of credibility is an issue, and the White House deserves scrutiny on that front. Basically, it's okay when they do it because reasons. Then Stelter actually demonstrates this fear-mongering hyperbole when he claims that Trump and Fox News don't want people paying attention to the markets in, quote, free fall. That's exactly the problem, Brian. You all are exaggerating and causing a panic specifically to hurt the economy and Trump. Saying the markets are in free fall is hyperbolic, and it's especially dangerous since the media play a big part in driving those fears. That's not to say that these market fears aren't legitimate. They definitely are, but the media isn't helping anything. We all know that if Obama or some other Democrat were in office right now, the media would be working to calm fears and support the president. Instead, we're seeing the opposite. There's a big difference between just reporting the facts and actively trying to undermine the president because you want him to lose in 2020. Nobody elected CNN to run the country. That's all I have for today. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching. And if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing to me on Patreon, Subscribestar, or just sending a donation on PayPal. However you help to support this channel, just know that I deeply, deeply appreciate it.